Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode. Today we're going to be talking about the Nephilim Look Like Clowns Part 3. And I'm just going to be building off of ideas put forth in the previous two videos. So I would recommend watching those before this one. But the basic premise is that the modern day clown might actually draw a lot of inspiration from the Nephilim of the past in both appearance and behavior. And also we talked about how the Freemasons, they have a couple of uh, offshoots, one being the Shriners, who seem to be focused on clowns and circuses, and then another one, another branch called the Royal Order of Jesters, and of course links to Jokers. So it, just this whole phenomena, it's, it's really interesting the more you look into it, but just sort of doing a little more digging, there's also this link between clowns and, the, and uh, this Lady of Guadalupe. And I believe that's supposed to be an equivalent to the Virgin Mary, if I'm not mistaken. But for some reason, once a year, there's this clown pilgrimage to this particular basilica. I think it's in Mexico City. But all these clowns go on a pilgrimage and they go to this basilica to give thanks to, the Vir to this Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I believe she's a patron saint of Mexico. But, you know, I understand the concept of giving thanks, but why clowns? Are there other professions also, you know, going on pilgrimages to uh, churches and giving thanks to this uh, lady of Guadalupe? It doesn't seem like it. So it's just really odd to me. You have this link between clowns and this lady of Guadalupe. And uh, there's some really just bizarre photos, but uh, I just wanted to mention that real quick. And I also, what I wanted to do is expand on this one topic I brought up in part two. And you have certain movie uh, filmmakers, such as David Lynch, and he has, uh, of course, been responsible for uh, TV shows like Twin Peaks and movies like Eraserhead, and he's got a YouTube channel, but he he is just fond of this particular pattern. It shows up in a lot of his uh, work, and it's this zigzag pattern. And I featured this in part two. But you also have this phenomena called liquid crystal polarization. And you, you have this phenomena where it's during certain interviews, people would be talking, and one second they would appear normal, and then the next minute, you would see all these zigzagging black and white patterns forming over them. And I think I, in part one, I showed a video of someone drawing, a, I think it was like an alien or a demon, and this black and white figure sort of manifested behind him. And I think I was just showing a, an image of Beetlejuice here. And there's just seems to be something with this black and white pattern. And uh, in part two, I think I talked about, you know, in, in the music video, don't Come Around Here No More by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, where you have this dimension and he plays the Mad Hatter and you've got the zigzag patterns and checkerboard. And again, people who take DMT, they'll, they see jesters and jokers and they'll talk about seeing fractals and patterns like this. So this zigzag pattern seems to have something to do with this other dimension. And I just talked about in part two how in uh, Twin Peaks there was this interdimensional entity called Bob who would uh, he was a possessing spirit and uh, in this interdimensional space you had these exact patterns again just like you did in this music video so keeping that in mind there's there was this uh, TV series that came out I think it was this year called Chucky and you've got this that evil possessed redheaded doll right Chucky and in this particular series, this boy ends up coming into contact with Chucky. And they, uh, this one particular bedroom is featured a lot. And it's this, uh, this boy's bedroom. And, but like the patterns of <laughs> the checkerboard uh, and uh, sorry, the zigzag patterns just are prevalent in this room. And again, you have uh, back here, this Bob was a possessing spirit and you have these zigzag patterns and you've got this possessed red-headed pale doll pale-faced doll 
you know, in these zigzag patterns and just uh, bizarre. And this particular room shows up in several episodes. So it's not just like one particular scene. Um, and I'm just scrolling through some of the different uh, episodes with this bedroom featured. But yeah, it's just really weird and just makes you wonder if that is by design. But uh, moving on, speaking of possession, the movie The Exorcist, obviously based on a book by William Peter Blatty, and I think it was 1971. But I guess, I, and I didn't know this, that the novel was actually based on a real case from the 40s. And it was um, actually a boy that was affected in the 40s. And I just found an article talking about how a suburban boy's demonic possession inspired The Exorcist. But what caught my attention for the purposes of, of this video is that uh, eventually, I believe this boy, they went through an exorcism and he was uh, delivered from his oppression. But during a blessing, uh, a priest was called and during this first blessing that happened in 1949, uh, and I don't think this is his real name, but the, uh, the bed, as he was being blessed, his bed began to shake and zigzag scratches suddenly appeared on his body. So again, just, you know, we've got this uh, concept of a possessing spirit, these zigzag patterns. You got this possessed doll, redheaded, pale-faced doll, you know, and, and you got these patterns featured again. And then you've got, uh, apparently, in real life, a child who was... Uh, going through some oppression on the verge of being possessed and he's getting these zigzag scratches appear on his body so just again none of this is proof we're just looking at things but in light of what we're talking about just really interesting and uh, he I guess when he finally got delivered uh, there was an exorcism and I guess it took place in this particular hospital I think it's in St. Louis or I don't know if it's still around but uh, this was the uh, a photo I found of that particular hospital. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. And somebody actually sent me a comment that really struck a chord with me. And it was just the comment, it was based on my part two of the series. When you get a migraine, you see these zigzag patterns. Now, I don't, me personally, I don't get migraines. I've never had migraines, but I, I did experience uh, this this uh, image on the right here. I, at one point, I was getting these zigzag patterns, and they were they appeared to be like right in front of my eye, but to the side a bit. But very, they were colorful, and they were in these zigzag patterns. And I just you know I compartmentalized all that. I, it didn't. I kind of buried it. But when this person mentioned seeing zigzags during migraines, that just really I found that really interesting. So there's this fun. I guess a term called ocular migraine, and it's used to co cover several migraine subtypes that cause visual disturbances. They say that they can develop with or without accompanying pain of a classic migraine attack, but they talk about all the different things you might see, including uh, zigzagging lines. So, man, just interesting, <laughs> you know, in light of what we're talking about. Now, these, uh, these attacks, these this phenomena, it's just chalked up to, I don't even know if they really give a, a good explanation, but I think there could be something more going on there. And there's different terms uh, that you'll find associated with this fortification illusion. So people will see all kinds of interesting things uh, during these ocular migraines and uh, a migraine with aura. So people have depicted some of these, what they see in just another rabbit hole, but uh, I think there's probably more to this phenomena than what we're being told. I would tend to agree with that. Now, just briefly, real quick, you know, while looking up all these different zigzag markings, and I came across this concept of uh, medieval graffiti and these patterns, which were often found on or around baptismal fonts. And apparently, they find a lot of these patterns in older houses and it's a belief that these were used to ward off evil spirits and I mean that does sound pretty ridiculous far out but in light of a lot of the things I've seen it doesn't actually seem so ridiculous anymore but this something called a hexafoil 
is a geometric design that is used as a traditional element of Gothic architecture. And like I said, circular scratchings in wood and rock designed to ward off evil spirits. And here's a hexafoil in stained glass window at Notre Dame. We see these all throughout a lot of these cathedrals and, and uh, churches. And uh, I just wanted to mention it. I thought it was uh, interesting uh, in light of kind of what we're talking about. So uh, I just, I'll leave that with you. And uh, I wanted to just do a quick update on the curious case of Bob. <laughs> Now, just one quick update. Uh, when I was looking in part, I believe part, uh, I can't remember if it was part one or two, but I was talking about the Illuminati card game. And there's this one character who pops up on a lot of different cards called Bob. Now, this Bob apparently is the figurehead of the parody religion, the Church of the Subgenius, but he goes by Bob Dobbs. And a, a comment was uh, kind of led me to what I'm going to talk about in this Bob Dobbs, I guess there was a song uh, released in the in the late 60s by a group called The Monkees off this particular album called Headquarters. But the lyrics in this particular song, and it's like a minute long, it's, it's just over a minute long. It's not really even a song, but kind of more of a spoken word thing. But uh, the lyrics, Mr. Dobbelina, Mr. Bob Dobbelina, and you have Bob Dobbs, Bob Dobbelina. So by on its own, you know, I very well just added to the list of coincidences. And I guess somebody asked one of the band members uh, on this particular Facebook page, who is Mr. Bob Dobbelina in that track, Zilch? And what this group, uh, this band member just said, it was the name of a department store manager in San Antonio. And he just ends by saying, that's my story. So interesting, you know, maybe, but where things uh, sort of get a little more interesting is, I guess, in 1991, this particular artist, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, uh, off this particular album, he released a single called Mr. Dabalina. And I should mention that the that this particular song draws inspiration and includes a vocal sample from that monkey song called Zilch. And when you look at some of these lyrics, the chorus is very similar. Uh, instead of Mr. Dublina, it's Mr. But it's, it's very similar. But when you get to some of these other verses, you got some really interesting references. One says, Mr. Dobbelina is a serpent. Don't you agree? And then this particular verse, it just says, uh, but Dell is not down with any clowns or jesters. So again, you know, we get back to the clowns and the jesters and the secret societies and just to kind of complete the full circle here, but just a really weird connection. These two different um, songs, this Bob from this card game, Bob Dobbs, Bob Dobbelina. There's, and uh, talking about Mr. Dobbelina is a serpent. And Dell, Dell is this artist, uh, is not down with any clowns or jesters. I'm sure there's some uh, more to that, but I just wanted to bring that to you guys. And uh, I thought it was interesting, but this is going to be a shorter video. But uh, I think that's all I have for you today. So until next time, take care. Bye.